Henri Matisse, a revolutionary figure in the art world of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, was born in La Chasteau Cambrissis, France, in 1869. His journey as an artist began relatively late in life, as he initially pursued a career in law before discovering his true passion for painting. Matisse's artistic development was heavily influenced by his encounter with Impressionism, particularly the works of Édouard Manet and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Inspired by their use of color and light, Matisse sought to capture the essence of a subject through vibrant hues and bold brushstrokes. In the early stages of his career, Matisse aligned himself with the Fauvist movement, a group of artists characterized by their vibrant and non-naturalistic use of color. Alongside fellow artists André Duran and Raoul Duffy, Matisse pushed the boundaries of color, using intense and unexpected combinations that defined conventional representation. This approach earned the Fauvist criticisms and mockery from traditionalists, but it also established Matisse as a fearless innovator. Matisse's exploration of color extended beyond paint into various other mediums, including sculpture, paper cutouts, and stained glass. He believed that color possessed its own expressive qualities and sought to harness its power to evoke emotion and create harmony with its compositions. Throughout his career, Matisse drew inspiration from a wide range of sources, including African and Oriental art, textiles, and the natural world. His travels to North Africa and the French Riviera deeply influenced his work, as he incorporated elements of these exotic landscapes and cultures into his art. His paintings and sculptures often portrayed scenes of leisure, interiors, and still lifes, which he infused with a sense of tranquility and joy. Matisse's later years were marked by physical challenges, including a near-fatal surgery that left him wheelchair-bound. However, his spirit remained undeterred, and he embraced this period of his life as an opportunity for renewed creativity. Unable to paint with traditional materials, Matisse turned to paper cutouts, creating vibrant collages that demonstrated his mastery of color and form. These cutouts became a defining aspect of his later work and are celebrated for their playfulness and sense of movement. Matisse's influence on the art world cannot be overstated. His bold use of color and his ability to capture the essence of his subject with seemingly simple forms opened up new avenues for artistic expression. His work inspired and influenced numerous artists, including the likes of Pablo Picasso and Willem de Kooning. Today, Matisse is regarded as one of the most important artists of the 20th century. His vibrant and expressive works continue to captivate audiences worldwide, inviting viewers into a world of color, energy, and emotions. Henri Matisse's unwavering dedication to pushing the boundaries of artistic conventions has left an indelible mark on the history of art, forever changing the way we perceive and experience the visual world. Jacob Lawrence, a prominent African-American artist, was born in Atlantic City, New Jersey in 1917. Renowned for his powerful narrative paintings, Lawrence played a significant role in shaping the art world and capturing the African-American experience in the United States. Growing up in Harlem during the vibrant cultural movement known as the Harlem Renaissance, Lawrence was exposed to the rich artistic and intellectual atmosphere of his time. His work was deeply influenced by the social and political climate of the era, as well as the stories and struggles of the African-American community. One of Lawrence's most renowned bodies of work is the Migration Series. Created in 1940 to 1941, this series of 60 paintings depicts the mass migration of African Americans from the rural south to the urban north during the early 20th century. Through bold colors, simplified forms, and striking compositions, Lawrence captured the human stories and collective experience of a generation seeking a better life. Lawrence's distinctive artistic style combined elements of realism, abstraction, and modernism. He often used a limited color palette and strong geometric shapes to convey the essence of his subject or scene. His paintings possessed a dynamic energy and a sense of movement, reflecting the vitality and resilience of the people and communities he portrayed. Beyond his subject's matter, Lawrence was deeply committed to social justice and used his art as a platform for activism. He believed in the power of art to raise awareness and bring about change. Throughout his career, he tackled issues such as racial inequality, poverty, and historical events, shedding light on important narratives that have been overlooked or marginalized. Lawrence's contributions to the art world extended beyond his own work. 
He was a dedicated educator, teaching at various institutions, and inspiring generations of artists. He emphasized the importance of artistic expression, creativity, and individuality, encouraging his students to find their unique voices. Over the course of his career, Lawrence received numerous accolades and honors, including the Guggenheim Fellowship and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. His work has been exhibited in major museums and galleries worldwide, cementing his place as one of the most influential African-American artists of the 20th century. Jacob Lawrence's art continues to resonate and captivate audiences with its powerful storytelling, social commentary, and visual impact. His ability to depict the human experience and bring marginalized stories to the forefront has left an indelible mark on the art world. Lawrence's legacy as an artist and advocate for social justice is a testament to the enduring power of art to inspire, inform, and provoke change. Henry Moore, born July 30th, 1898 in Castleford, Yorkshire, England, was a renowned British sculptor whose innovative and monumental works transformed the field of modern sculpture. Moore's artistic vision and distinctive style combined organic forms with abstract elements, creating sculptures that embraced the natural world while pushing the boundaries of traditional sculpture. Moore's early artistic development was influenced by his experiences in the Yorkshire countryside, where he developed a deep appreciation for natural forms and landscapes. He studied at the Leeds School of Art and later at the Royal College of Art in London, where he honed his skills and explored various sculptural techniques. One of Moore's most recognizable themes was the human figure. He was fascinated by the human form and its relationship with the surrounding space. Moore's sculptures often depicted reclining figures, abstracted and simplified to emphasize their essential qualities. His figures exuded a sense of harmony, grace, and monumentality, while also conveying a profound connection to the earth and the passage of time. Moore's sculptures were primarily created using traditional materials such as stone, wood, and bronze. He had a deep understanding of these materials, and his mastery allowed him to manipulate and shape them with great skill. His works showcased a balance between solidity and void, with many sculptures featuring hollowed-out spaces or pierced forms, creating a sense of lightness and openness within the overall composition. One of Moore's most celebrated sculptures is Reclining Figure, a recurring theme in his Yovor. This series of sculptures explored the relationship between the figure and its environment, often blurring the boundaries between the human form and the natural world. Reclining figure sculptures were characterized by their smooth, curvilinear shapes, inviting viewers to interact with the sculpture from multiple angles and perspectives. Moore's artistic contributions extended beyond individual sculptures. He also created large-scale public works often placed in outdoor settings. These monumental sculptures, such as draped reclining figure and three-piece sculpture vertebrae, became iconic landmarks, transforming public spaces and engaging viewers on a grand scale. Moore's sculptures challenged the traditional notion of sculpture as an object to be observed from a distance, inviting viewers to explore and experience the artwork physically. Throughout his career, Moore received numerous awards and accolades for his contributions to the arts. He was appointed as a trustee of the Tate Gallery and the National Gallery in London, further solidifying his position as one of Britain's most esteemed artists. Moore's influence extended beyond the art world, and he played an active role in promoting public appreciation for sculpture through lectures, writings, and educational initiatives. Henry Moore's impact on the world of sculpture is immeasurable. His innovative approach, merging organic forms with abstraction, expanded the possibilities of sculptural expression. Moore's ability to evoke a sense of timelessness and universality in his works resonated with audiences worldwide, and his sculptures continue to inspire and captivate viewers to this day. His legacy as one of the most significant sculptors of the 20th century endures, and his contributions to the field remain a testament to his artistic genius. Auguste Rodin, born Francois-Auguste René Rodin on November 12, 1840 in Paris, France, was a highly influential sculptor who revolutionized the art world with his innovative approach and expressive style. Known for his ability to capture raw human emotion and explore the depths of the human experience, Rodin's work are celebrated for their realism, dramatic intensity, and exquisite craftsmanship. Rodin's artistic journey began with a passion for drawing, which eventually led him to pursue a career in sculpture. He initially trained at the Petit École, a school for decorative arts, before gaining admission to the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. However, Rodin's unorthodox artistic style and refusal to conform to traditional norms 
caused him to face rejection and criticism from the academic establishment. Despite these setbacks, Rodden persisted in his artistic pursuits and embarked on a path of experimentation and innovation. He rejected the idealized forms of classical sculpture and instead sought to capture the complexity and imperfections of the human form. Rodin believed that true art should reflect the genuine nature of humanity, with all its flaws, struggles, and passions. Rodin's most famous work, The Thinker, created between 1880 and 1902, has become an iconic symbol of contemplation and introspection. The sculpture depicts a muscular, nude male figure seated on a rock, deep in thoughts. It represents the universal human condition of reflection and the power of the human mind. The Thinker has been widely reproduced and is considered one of the most recognized sculptures in the world. Another notable masterpiece by Rodin is The Kiss, completed in 1889. This sculpture portrays a passionate embrace between a man and a woman capturing the intensity and sensuality of love. The Kiss explores themes of desire, longing, and the complexities of human relationships, showcasing Rodin's ability to convey emotion through his art. Rodin's sculptural techniques was characterized by his use of texture and his ability to manipulate light and shadow to create depth and movement. He employed a method known as modeling, in which he worked directly with clay or plaster, allowing his hands to shape and mold the material with great sensitivity and precision. This approach gave his sculptures a sense of spontaneity and vitality. In addition to his individual sculptures, Rodin also created monumental compositions and commissioned works. One of his most significant projects was The Gates of Hell, a massive sculptural ensemble inspired by Dante's Divine Comedy. Although never fully realized during his lifetime, The Gates of Hell showcases Rodin's mastery of sculptural storytelling and his exploration of themes such as damnation, redemption, and the human condition. August Rodin's impact on the world of art cannot be overstated. His groundbreaking approach to his sculpture challenged conventional standards and paved the way for future generations of artists. His emphasis on emotion, individuality, and the human form marked a departure from the academic traditions of this time and laid the foundation for modern sculpture. Rodin's influence can be seen in the works of countless sculptors who followed in his footsteps, and his legacy as one of the greatest sculptors in history remains unquestioned. Art in 5, Gustav Klimt Gustav Klimt was born in 1862 in Baumgarten, a small town near Vienna. He was the second of seven children, and his family was of modest means. His father was a gold engraver, and Klimt spent much of his youth working in his father's studio. It was there that he first developed an appreciation for art, and he began to experiment with different techniques and styles. Klimt's early life was marked by tragedy. When he was just 14 years old, his younger brother Ernst died of scarlet fever. The loss of his brother had a profound impact on Klimt, and it would continue to haunt him throughout his life. Despite this early setback, Klimt continued to pursue his passion for art. He attended the Vienna School of Arts and Crafts, where he studied under the noted painter Franz von Matsch. It was during this time that he began to develop his own unique style, combining traditional techniques with modern sensibilities. In 1897, Klimt co-founded the Vienna Secession, a group of artists who sought to break away from the traditional art world and embrace new, modern styles. The secessionists, as they were known, held exhibitions and promoted their work throughout Europe, and Klimt quickly became one of the movement's most celebrated members. Despite his success as an artist, Klimt's personal life was often controversial. He had numerous affairs with his models, many of whom were young women, and he fathered at least 14 children out of wedlock. Some critics accused him of exploiting these women for his own artistic purposes, while others praised his willingness to challenge traditional gender roles and sexual mores. Klimt's most famous painting, The Kiss, caused a stir when it was first exhibited in 1908. The painting depicts a couple locked in a passionate embrace, their bodies enveloped in a shimmering golden cloak. Some critics saw the painting as a celebration of romantic love, while others condemned it as indecent and pornographic. Klimt continued to create innovative and provocative works throughout his career. His use of bold colors, intricate patterns, and unusual compositions set him apart from other artists of his time, and his influence can be seen in the work of countless artists who followed in his footsteps. 
Despite his controversial personal life, Klimt remained a devoted artist until his death in 1918. He continued to paint even as he battled a series of illnesses, and he produced some of his most famous works during this period, including The Bride and Death and Life. Today, Klimt is widely regarded as one of the greatest artists of all time. His legacy continues to inspire and captivate audiences around the world, cementing his place in art history as a true visionary and iconoclast. Art in 5. Gustav Klimt Yoshitaka Amano, born on July 28, 1952, in Shizuka, Japan, is a renowned Japanese artist and illustrator known for his distinctive style and contributions to the fields of manga, anime, and video games. Amano's artistic journey began in the 1960s when he started working as an animator for Tatsunuko Production, a prominent animation studio in Japan. It was during this time that he had honed his skills and developed a unique artistic vision that would set him apart from his peers. Amano's art is characterized by its ethereal and dreamlike quality, blending elements of fantasy, mythology, and the supernatural. His intricate and delicate brushwork, combined with a keen sense of composition and color, create visually stunning and captivating images. Amano's work often explores themes of beauty, transcendence, and the fragility of existence, drawing inspiration from diverse sources such as Japanese folklore, Western art history, and global cultural traditions. One of Amano's first notable contributions to his artwork for the iconic video game series Final Fantasy. Beginning with the first installment of the franchise in 1987, Amano's illustrations became synonymous with the visual identity of the games. His intricate character designs, elaborate landscapes, and imaginative creatures brought the game worlds to life, capturing the imagination of players around the world. Amano's artwork for Final Fantasy is celebrated for its unique blend of Eastern and Western aesthetics, combining elements of traditional Japanese art with influences from European art movements such as the Art Nouveau and symbolism. Beyond his work in video games, Amano has also made significant contributions in the world of manga and illustration. He's created numerous manga series, such as Vampire Hunter D and The Tale of Genji, showcasing his ability to tell compelling stories through his art. Amano's illustrations have graced the covers of numerous novels, art books, and magazines, gaining him international recognition and admiration. Amano's artistic versatility extends beyond traditional mediums. He's also ventured into other creative realms, including costume design, theater productions, and even opera. His collaborations with renowned filmmakers and directors, such as Hayao Miyazaki and Neil Gaiman, have further solidified his status as a visionary artist with a far-reaching impact. Throughout his career, Amano has received numerous accolades and recognition for his contributions to the arts. His work has been exhibited in galleries and museums worldwide, and he has published numerous art books showcasing his vast body of work. Amano's ability to capture the essence of imagination and evoke a sense of wonder through his art has made him an influential figure in the realms of fantasy, anime, and gaming. Yoshitaka Amano's artistic legacy continues to inspire and captivate audiences globally. His unique style, blending traditional and contemporary influences, and his ability to transcend boundaries and create fantastical worlds have made him an enduring figure in the world of art and popular culture. Amano's ability to infuse his creations with beauty, mystery, and a touch of otherworldly has established him as one of the most celebrated and influential artists of his generation. Art in 5. Dan Flavin Dan Flavin was an American artist born in New York in 1933. He's best known for his pioneering work with fluorescent light, which he used to create minimalist sculptures that explored the relationships between light, space, and color. Flavin began his artistic career in the 1950s as a painter, but he soon became interested in using light as a medium. He began experimenting with fluorescent tubes, which he saw as an industrial product that could be repurposed for artistic ends. In 1961, Flavin created his first light installation, which consisted of a single fluorescent tube mounted on a wall. The tube emitted a soft, 
cool light that filled the space around it, creating a subtle but powerful visual effect. Over the next few years, Flavin continued to refine his use of fluorescent light, creating increasingly complex installations that played with the qualities of light and space. Flavin's work was closely associated with the minimalist movement, which emerged in the 1960s as a reaction against the excesses of abstract expressionism. Minimalist artists sought to create simple, pared-down works that emphasized the essential qualities of their materials. In Flavin's case, this meant using fluorescent light to create installations that were both elegant and austere. His works often consisted of simple geometric shapes such as squares, circles, and rectangles that were arranged in precise configurations to create a sense of order and balance. One of Flavin's most famous works is his Monument series, which he began in 1964. The series consists of installations made up of fluorescent tubes arranged in specific configurations that reference monuments and memorials. The tubes emit a soft, diffused light that suggests the solemnity and reverence of a traditional monument, while also subverting its weighty symbolism with the playful and ephemeral qualities of light. Flavin's work was not without controversy. Some critics accused him of being too focused on technique and process and not enough on the emotional and intellectual content of his work. Others saw his use of industrial materials as a betrayal of the humanistic values of art. Despite these criticisms, Flavin's work continues to be highly influential in the world of contemporary art. His innovative use of fluorescent light has inspired countless artists and designers, and his legacy as a pioneer of minimalism remains secure. Flavin died in 1996 at the age of 63, but his work continues to be celebrated around the world. Major retrospectives of his work have been held at the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the Dia Art Foundation in Beacon, New York, and the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, among others. Today, his sculptures and installations can be found in museums and galleries around the world, serving as a testament to his enduring influence on the art world. Art in Five, Dan Flavin. Art in Five, Edvard Munch. Edvard Munch was a Norwegian painter born in 1863 in the small town of Adelsbruck. He was the second of five children and his family was plagued by tragedy throughout his childhood. His mother died of tuberculosis when he was just five years old, and his older sister Sophie died of the same disease when he was 14. These early losses would deeply influence Munch's art, which often explored themes of illness, death, and despair. Despite his difficult upbringing, Monk showed an early talent for drawing and painting. He enrolled at the Royal School of Art and Design in Christiana, now Oslo, in 1881, where he studied under the painter Christian Krog. It was during this time where he began to develop his own unique style, which combined elements of Impressionism and Symbolism. In the 1980s, Monk began to create some of his most famous works, including The Scream. This iconic painting, which depicts a figure with a distorted face and open mouth, has become an emblem of modern anxiety and alienation. Monk created several versions of the painting, including one that he inscribed with the words, could only have been painted by a madman. Some critics say this is evidence of Monk's own mental instability, while others say it's a commentary on the state of modern society. Monk's personal life was often tumultuous. He suffered from chronic depression and anxiety, and he struggled with alcoholism and addiction throughout much of his life. He had several tumultuous relationships with women, including Tola Larsen, who shot him in the hand after a heated argument. Despite these difficulties, Monk remained deeply committed to his art, and he continued to paint even as he battled his demons. In addition to his paintings, Monk also created a series of prints that are now considered masterpieces of the medium. His woodcuts and lithographs often featured stark black and white imagery that was both haunting and powerful. Monk's style was heavily influenced by the Symbolist movement, which was popular in Europe at the time. His work often featured strong, sweeping lines, distorted figures, and vivid colors, 
which gave his paintings a sense of intensity and emotion. Some of Monk's most famous works include The Scream, perhaps Monk's most iconic painting. The Scream depicts a figure on a bridge screaming in anguish. The painting is often interpreted as a representation of modern anxiety and alienation, and has become a symbol of existential dread. Madonna. This painting depicts a woman with a halo around her head holding a baby. The figures are distorted and elongated, giving the painting a sense of otherworldliness. The painting has been interpreted as a comment on the nature of motherhood and the role of women in society. The Dance of Life This painting depicts a group of figures dancing in a circle with a skeleton figure standing in the center. The painting is often interpreted as a commentary on the inevitability of death and the fleeting nature of human existence. Puberty This painting depicts a young girl standing in front of a mirror holding her hands over her breasts. The figure is distorted and elongated, giving the painting a sense of unease. The painting has been interpreted as a commentary on the nature of sexuality and the transition from childhood to adulthood. Ashes This painting depicts a woman laying on a bed, surrounded by the ashes of a fire. The painting is often interpreted as a commentary on the destructive nature of love and the pain of loss. Monk's work was controversial in its time, as it often dealt with taboo subjects and challenged traditional artistic conventions. Monk's influence can be seen in the work of countless artists who followed in his footsteps. His willingness to explore dark and taboo subjects paved the way for later artists like Francis Bacon and Cindy Sherman, while his use of bold, expressive brushstrokes anticipated the rise of Expressionism and Abstract Expressionism. Monk died in 1944 at the age of 80, leaving behind a legacy that continues to captivate and inspire audiences around the world. His work continues to be exhibited in major museums and galleries, and his influence can be felt in everything from film to fashion to music. Despite his personal struggles, Monk remained true to his vision throughout his life, creating art that was both deeply personal and universal in its appeal. Art in Five, Edvard Munch. Ichiro Oda, born on January 1st, 1975, and Kumamoto, Japan, is a highly acclaimed manga artist and the creator of the immensely popular manga series, One Piece. Oda's journey as an artist began at a young age, and his passion for storytelling and illustration led him to pursue a career in manga. One Piece, which debuted in 1997 and continues to this day, has become a global phenomenon, capturing the hearts of millions of readers worldwide. The series follows the adventures of Monkey D. Luffy and his crew of pirates as they search for the ultimate treasure, the One Piece, in a world filled with fantastical islands, mystical creatures, and formidable adversaries. Oda's art style is distinct and instantly recognizable, characterized by exaggerated and dynamic character designs, detailed and immersive backgrounds, and a sense of whimsy and adventure that permeates every panel. His ability to create vibrant and diverse characters with unique personalities has endeared him to fans of all ages. Oda's skill in capturing emotions, whether it's comedy, drama, or intense action, brings depth and relatability to his characters, making them resonate with readers on a profound level. Beyond his artistry, Oda is celebrated for his exceptional storytelling prowess. One Piece is a masterful tapestry of intricate plot lines, rich world building, and compelling character arcs. Oda seamlessly weaves together humor, suspense, and profound themes of friendship, loyalty, and dreams, creating a narrative that resonates with readers across cultures and generations. His ability to craft engaging and unpredictable storylines that keep fans eagerly anticipating each new chapter contributes to the longevity and enduring popularity of One Piece. Oda's dedication to his craft is also evident in his meticulous attention to detail. He has a remarkable ability to create intricate and visually stunning environments, ranging from bustling cities to lush jungles and treacherous seas. Each panel is meticulously crafted, showcasing Oda's passion for creating immersive and visually captivating worlds that draw readers into the story. Additionally, Oda's commitment to his work is reflected in his rigorous work ethic. Known for his intense work schedule, he's renowned for his dedication to delivering consistent and high-quality content. Despite the demanding nature of creating a weekly manga series, Oda's passion and love for his craft shine through in every chapter. 
Ochiro Oda's impact on the world of manga and pop culture cannot be overstated. One Piece has not only achieved immense commercial success, but has also garnered critical acclaim for its storytelling, artistry, and profound themes. Oda's ability to create a sense of wonder and adventure, combined with his talent for crafting engaging characters and captivating narratives, has earned him a dedicated fan base that spans the globe. With his boundless creativity, innovative storytelling techniques, and unwavering commitment to his craft, Achira Oda has solidified his place as one of the most influential and revered manga artists of all time. His contributions to the medium have left an indelible mark on the world of manga and continue to inspire aspiring artists and storytellers to this day. Marcel Duchamp, a French-American artist, was born in Blainville, Crevron, France in 1887. Regarded as one of the most influential figures in 20th century art, Duchamp challenged traditional notions of art, redefined the boundaries of creativity, and had a profound impact on the development of conceptual art. Duchamp's artistic journey began within the realms of Cubism and Daism, but he quickly transcended these movements, forging a path entirely his own. He rejected the notion of art as solely a visual or aesthetic experience, instead emphasizing the importance of ideas and intellectual engagement. One of Duchamp's most famous works, The Fountain, 1917, a urinal signed with the pseudonym R. Mutt, epitomizes his radical approach to art. By presenting an everyday object as an artwork, Duchamp challenged the traditional notion of the artist as a skilled craftsman and questioned the very definition of art itself. With this act, he pioneered the concept of the ready-made, ordinary objects transformed into art through the act of selection and designation. Duchamp's exploration of the ready-made continued with the works like Bicycle Wheel, 1913, and Bottle Rack, 1914, where he elevated mundane objects into the realm of art by presenting them in a new context. These works challenged conventional aesthetics, inviting viewers to question the role of the artist, the value of originality, and the nature of art's meaning. Beyond the ready-mades, Duchamp engaged in other artistic endeavors, such as his Roto Reliefs, 1935, spinning discs that created optical illusions, and his enigmatic work, Etant Dawns, 1946 to 1966, a tableau visible through a peephole, shrouded in mystery and evoking questions of voyeurism and perception. Duchamp's ideas and actions had a far-reaching impact on the world of art. His concept of the ready-made revolutionized the definition of art, paving the way for later movements like conceptual art and minimalism. Duchamp's influence extended to artists such as Andy Warhol, Robert Rauschenberg, and Yoko Ono, who embraced the notion of art as an intellectual and philosophical exploration. Duchamp's radical approach to art was accompanied by his writings and critical engagement with the art world. He challenged prevailing art theories, questioned art institutions, and advocated for the importance of the viewer's interpretation and participation. Duchamp's writings, including his influential essay, The Creative Act, 1957, continue to be studied and debated by scholars and artists alike. Marcel Duchamp's legacy as an avant-garde artist and intellectual provocateur remains enduring. His radical ideas, on a conventional approach to art making and questioning of established norms, have left an indelible mark on the art world. Duchamp's ability to challenge preconceptions and push the boundaries of artistic expression serves as an inspiration for generations of artists, encouraging them to question, experiment, and explore the limitless possibilities of art. Giacomo Balla, an Italian painter and key figure in the Futurist movement, is celebrated for his vibrant and dynamic artworks that capture the essence of modernity and movement. Born on July 18, 1871, in Turin, Italy, Balla's innovative approach to art played a pivotal role in shaping the aesthetic and philosophical ideals of the early 20th century. Balla's journey into the art world was marked by experimentation and a passion for capturing motion. His interest in depicting movement was influenced by the advent of photography and chronophotography, which sought to freeze moments in time. This fascination with movement led him to embrace the principles of futurism, an artistic movement that celebrated speed, technology, and the dynamism of modern life. One of Bala's most iconic works, Dynamism of a Dog on a Leash, 1912, exemplifies his fascination with motion and energy. 
In this painting, the leash of a dog is portrayed as a series of intersecting lines, conveying a sense of rapid movement and the bustling energy of the urban environment. The fractured forms and dynamic composition reflect the futurist belief in capturing the inherent dynamism of the modern world. Bala's exploration of movement extended beyond traditional painting. He was also interested in applying his artistic ideas to other mediums, including fashion and design. He collaborated with other futurist artists on creating innovative clothing and objects that embraced the principles of dynamism and modernity. The intersection of art and science was another aspect of Bala's work. He was intrigued by the concept of color theory and the psychological effects of color combinations. This interest manifested in his series of abstract works known as Abstract Speed Plus Sound, 1913-1914, where he explored the visual representation of sound and movement through abstract forms and vibrant colors. Bala's contributions to the futurist movement extended beyond his own art. He was an active participant in the intellectual discussions of the time, advocating for the transformative power of art in shaping society. His manifesto, Futurist Reconstruction of the Universe, outlined the movement's philosophy and ideals. Giacomo Bala's legacy is defined by his ability to capture the spirit of his era and translate it onto canvas. His innovative use of form, color, and composition in capturing motion and modernity has left an indelible mark on art history. His dynamic artworks serve as a visual reflection of the rapid changes occurring during the early 20th century and continue to inspire contemporary artists, exploring the intersections of art, technology, and the dynamism of the world. Art in 5 James Rosenquist James Rosenquist was an American painter who played a significant role in the pop art movement of the 1960s. He was born on November 29, 1933, in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and grew up in Minneapolis. He was known for his monumental pop art paintings that often incorporated fragmented images from advertising and popular culture. He was born in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and spent much of his childhood moving around the Midwest due to his father's job as an airplane mechanic. Rosenquist studied art at the University of Minnesota before moving to New York City in the late 1950s to pursue a career as an artist. He began his career as a commercial painter, creating billboards and advertisements for various companies. This experience would later influence his art as he began incorporating images from advertising and mass media into his paintings. In the early 1960s, Rosenquist became associated with the pop art movement which was characterized by its use of popular imagery and bright, bold colors. He gained critical acclaim for his large-scale paintings, which often featured fragments of images from advertising and popular culture arranged in surreal and unexpected ways. Some of his most famous works include F-111, 1965, a monumental painting that measures 86 feet long, and Marilyn Monroe, 1, 1962, a portrait of the famous actress created from fragments of images from magazines and advertisements. Rosenquist was also known for his printmaking, creating numerous lithographs and screen prints throughout his career. He collaborated with several famous printmakers, including Gemini GEL and ULAE, to create innovative and technically complex prints. Throughout his career, Rosenquist remained politically engaged and committed to social justice issues. He was a vocal critic of the Vietnam War and created several works that addressed political and social issues, including The Fireman's Coat, 1983, a painting that critiques the Reagan administration's policies towards nuclear war. Rosenquist continued to work as an artist until his death in 2017. His work remains influential and continues to be celebrated for its innovative use of popular imagery and its commentary on the mass media and consumer culture. Art in 5 James Rosenquist Joaquin Sorolla, born on February 27, 1863, in Valencia, Spain, was a prominent Spanish painter known for his vibrant and luminous works, particularly his depictions of landscapes, seascapes, and portraits. Sorolla is celebrated for his ability to capture the essence of light and color, creating scenes that exude a sense of life and vitality. 
From a young age, Sorolla demonstrated a natural talent for art. He received his initial artistic training at the School of Fine Arts in Valencia before furthering his studies in Madrid and Rome. Influenced by the works of the Spanish masters and the Impressionist movement, Sorolla developed his unique style, characterized by loose brushwork, bold colors, and a keen observation of light and shadow. Sorolla's preferred subjects were scenes of everyday life, often depicting people engaged in outdoor activities. His beach scenes, in particular, are highly regarded and showcase his ability to capture the play of sunlight on water and the joyful atmosphere of leisurely moments. Sorolla's skillful use of light and color brings his paintings to life, infusing them with a sense of energy and movement. One of Sorolla's most significant accomplishments was his ability to portray the human figure with remarkable realism and sensitivity. His portraits are known for their exquisite attention to detail and their ability to convey the personalities and emotions of his subjects. Sorolla had a particular talent for capturing the subtleties of facial expressions and the play of light on skin, which added depth and authenticity to his portraits. Throughout his career, Sorolla achieved international acclaim and success. His works were exhibited in major cities across Europe and the United States, earning him numerous awards and honors. In 1909, he received a grand prize at the Exposition Universelle in Paris, solidifying his reputation as one of Spain's most accomplished painters. Sorolla's commitment to his craft extended beyond his artistic pursuits. He was a dedicated advocate for social causes and often used his art to shed light on important issues of his time. His painting, Sad Inheritance, 1899, depicted disabled children bathing in the sea that raised awareness about the plight of those suffering from physical disabilities and the need for social reform. Tragically, Sorolla's life was cut short when he died at the age of 60 in 1923. However, his artistic legacy lives on, and his impact on the art world continues to resonate. Sorolla's works can be found in prominent museums and collections worldwide, where they continue to captivate viewers with their beauty, vitality, and masterful use of light and color. Joaquin Sorolla's contributions to the art world are immeasurable. His ability to capture the essence of light, his masterful brushwork, and his skillful portrayal of the human figure set him apart as a true artistic genius. Sorolla's legacy is one of beauty, authenticity, and a deep appreciation for the wonders of the natural world. His works remain a testament to his remarkable talent and his enduring impact on the art world. Art in 5, Marc Chagall Marc Chagall was a Russian-French artist who lives from 1887 to 1985. He was born in Vitebsk, a small town in what is now Belarus. Chagall was the eldest of nine children in a Hasidic Jewish family, and his upbringing would have a profound impact on his art throughout his life. Chagall's early years were marked by poverty and hardship. His family struggled to make ends meet, and Chagall was forced to work as a laborer from a young age. Despite these challenges, he showed a natural talent for art, and he began to take classes at a local art school. In 1910, Chagall moved to Paris, where he was exposed to the latest developments in modern art. He was particularly drawn to the works of the Fauvists and the Cubists, and he began to experiment with these styles in his own work. Chagall's art during this period was characterized by bold colors, distorted forms, and dreamlike imagery. During World War I, Chagall returned to Vitebsk, where he was appointed as the head of the Vitebsk School of Arts. He used his position to promote his own unique version of modern art, combining elements of folk art, Jewish tradition, and the avant-garde. Chagall's work during this period was deeply influenced by his Jewish heritage, and many of his paintings featured biblical themes and symbols. In 1923, Chagall moved back to Paris, where he continued to explore his unique blend of modern and traditional art. His work during this period included a series of large-scale murals for the Paris Opera and a number of illustrations for books and magazines. During World War II, Chagall was forced to flee Paris and go into hiding. He eventually made his way to the United States, where he continued to work and exhibit his art. Chagall's later works were characterized by a more subdued color palette and a greater emphasis on narrative and symbolism. Throughout his career, Chagall remained a deeply spiritual artist, drawing inspiration from his Jewish faith and his love of life. 
His work has been celebrated for its playful, whimsical quality, as well as its deep emotional resonance. Marc Chagall was a prolific artist who created many famous works throughout his long career. Number one, I and the Village, 1911. This painting depicts a scene from Chagall's childhood in Weitbesk with a whimsical composition featuring a man and a goat. It's one of his most famous early works and showcases his distinctive style. Number two, The Birthday, 1915. This painting features a woman floating in midair, surrounded by a colorful array of objects and animals. It's a dreamlike composition that exemplifies Chagall's use of symbolism and imagination. Number three, The Fiddler. 1913. This painting features a fiddler playing music in a village square, surrounded by a group of dancing figures. It's one of Chagall's most iconic images, and it's become a symbol of Jewish life and culture. Number 4. The Promenade. 1918. This painting features a couple walking through a vibrant, whimsical landscape. It's a celebration of love and life, and it showcases Chagall's use of bold colors and playful imagery. Number 5. White Crucifixion, 1938. This painting depicts Jesus on the cross, surrounded by scenes of violence and oppression. It's a powerful statement against the persecution of Jews in Europe during World War II, and it has become one of Chagall's most important works. Number 6. The Four Seasons, 1974. America Windows, 1977. These stained glass windows located in the Art Institute of Chicago feature a vibrant array of colors and shapes. They're a celebration of American culture and identity, and they showcase Chagall's ability to work in a variety of mediums. Number 8. The Paris Opera Ceiling, 1964. This monumental ceiling mural, located in the Palace Garner in Paris, features a colorful array of figures and motifs. It's a celebration of music and the arts, and it's considered one of Chagall's most impressive works. These are just a few examples of the many famous works created by Marc Chagall throughout his long and illustrious career. Each painting showcases his unique style and vision, and they continue to inspire and captivate audiences around the world. Today, Chagall is widely regarded as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. His legacy continues to inspire and captivate audiences around the world, cementing his place in art history as a true visionary and iconoclast. Art in 5, Marc Chagall Max Ernst, a German-born artist, was a key figure in the Surrealist movement and a pioneer of innovative artistic techniques. He was born in Brühl, Germany in 1891, and his artistic career spanned several decades, leaving an indelible mark on the art world. Ernst's early works were influenced by movements such as Dada and Expressionism. He was deeply affected by his experiences during World War I, which had a profound impact on his artistic development. In the aftermath of the war, Ernst's art became a way to explore the depths of the human psyche, expressing the anxieties, dreams, and unconscious desires of the individual. One of Ernst's most notable contributions to the art world was its development and technique known as frottage. By placing a piece of paper over a textured surface and rubbing it with a pencil or other medium, Ernst created spontaneous and unpredictable patterns. Frottage allowed him to tap into the subconscious, revealing hidden imagery and symbolic associations. This technique became a defining element of his work and a means of assessing the surreal and fantastical realms of the mind. Ernst also experimented with collage, a technique that involved combining disparate elements from various sources to create a unified composition. He pioneered the use of collage in surrealist art, seamlessly blending different visual fragments to construct dreamlike and enigmatic narratives. His collages often featured elements of nature, mythology, and the human form, offering viewers a glimpse into the world that transcended the boundaries of reality. Throughout his career, Ernst embraced automatism and chance as creative tools. He sought to bypass conscious control and access the realm of the unconscious, believing that true artistic expression resided in the irrational and unexpected. This approach allowed him to create works that were simultaneously playful and profound, 
inviting viewers to question the nature of reality and the power of the imagination. Ernst's art also reflected his personal experiences and struggles. He grappled with the trauma of war, the dislocation of exile, and the turbulence of personal relationships. His paintings often portrayed fantastic and nightmarish landscapes, distorted figures, and symbolic motifs that reflected his inner turmoil and psychological explorations. As a leading figure of the Surrealist movement, Ernst collaborated with other renowned artists and writers, including André Breton, Salvador Dali, and Paul Ulloart. His art and writings contributed to the Surrealist Manifesto and helped shape the direction of the movement. Max Ernst's legacy as an artist continues to captivate and inspire audiences today. His innovative techniques, use of symbolism, and exploration of the unconscious have had a lasting impact on the art world. Ernst's ability to merge the real and the imagery, the conscious and the unconscious, has left a profound mark on the development of surrealism and has expanded the possibilities of artistic expression. His work serves as a testament to the power of art to transcend reality and unlock the mysteries of the human mind. Joanne Miro, born on April 20th, 1993 in Barcelona, Spain, was a renowned Catalan painter, sculptor, and ceramicist. He is celebrated as one of the greatest surrealist artists of the 20th century, known for his innovative and imaginative approach to art. Miro's artistic journey began in Barcelona, where he studied at the School of Industrial and Fine Arts. Initially influenced by Fauvism and Cubism, Miro soon developed his unique style, which blended abstraction, surrealism, and a childlike sense of wonder. His works often feature vibrant colors, organic shapes, and whimsical forms that evoke a sense of playfulness and fantasy. Throughout his career, Miro explored various mediums, including painting, sculpture, ceramics, and printmaking. He believed in the power of art to communicate directly to the viewer's emotions and subconscious. His art often incorporated symbolic and dreamlike elements, with recurring motifs such as stars, birds, moons, and human figures. One of Miro's most iconic series is his Constellations, created between 1939 and 1941 during the tumultuous years of World War II. These works are characterized by a combination of abstract forms and symbols that convey a sense of cosmic energy and optimism in the face of adversity. Miro's constellations demonstrate his ability to balance the personal and the universal, creating art that is both visually captivating and emotionally resonant. Another notable aspect of Miro's artistic practice is his interest in experimenting with unconventional materials and techniques. He incorporated elements such as sand, tar, and other non-traditional media into his paintings, adding texture and depth to his compositions. Miro's willingness to push the boundaries of traditional art-making processes exemplifies his innovative spirit and desire to constantly challenge artistic norms. Miro's impact extended beyond the canvas, as he also collaborated with other artists, poets, and writers. He worked with surrealist poets such as Andre Breton and Paul Ouard, illustrating their books and participating in the Surrealist Movement's collective projects. Miro's collaborations with poets allowed him to further explore the relationship between image and text, resulting in visually striking and intellectually stimulating works. In addition to his paintings and sculptures, Miro also left a lasting legacy in the realm of public art. His monumental sculptures can be found in various cities around the world, including Barcelona, Chicago, and Paris. These sculptures, often characterized by bold shapes and primary colors, invite viewers to interact with the artwork in a larger, more public setting. Miro's contributions to the art world were widely recognized and celebrated. He received numerous awards and honors throughout his lifetime, including the Guggenheim International Award in 1958 and the Gold Medal of Fine Arts from the Spanish government in 1980. His works continue to be exhibited in prestigious museums and galleries worldwide, captivating audiences with their playful and enigmatic nature. Joanne Miro's art transcends boundaries, inviting viewers to enter a world of imagination and freedom. His ability to blend abstraction, surrealism, and symbolism created a visual language that spoke directly to the emotions and subconscious. Miro's legacy as a pioneering artist lies in his unwavering commitment to artistic experimentation and his ability to capture the essence of the human experience through his innovative and evocative works. Paul Cezanne, one of the most influential artists of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, was born in Aix-en-Provence, France in 1839. Coming from a middle-class family, 
Cezanne initially pursued a career in law, but his passion for art led him to abandon his studies and dedicate himself entirely to painting. In his early years as an artist, Cezanne struggled to find his unique style and faced rejection from the art establishment. Despite these setbacks, he remained determined and embarked on a lifelong quest to capture the essence of nature and form through his art. Cezanne's breakthrough came when he met fellow artist Camille Pissarro, who introduced him to the Impressionist movement. Inspired by the Impressionists' emphasis on light and color, Cezanne began to develop his own distinctive style, which would later be hailed as a precursor to Cubism and other modern art movements. Rejecting the transient effects of Impressionism, Cezanne sought to create a more enduring and solid representation of the world. He developed a unique approach to composition, breaking down complex subjects into their basic geometric shapes and emphasizing the underlying structure. This technique, known as constructive stroke, allowed him to convey depth and volume through carefully arranged brushwork. Cezanne's subject matter varied widely, encompassing landscapes, still lifes, portraits, and bathers. His beloved hometown of Axen province provided him with endless inspiration, and he often depicted the serene beauty of the surrounding countryside in his landscapes. His still lifes, with their carefully arranged objects and vibrant colors, revealed his meticulous attention to detail and his ability to infuse inanimate objects with a sense of life and energy. Despite his growing reputation as an artist, Cezanne remained a reclusive figure avoiding the spotlight and rarely exhibiting his work. He struggled with self-doubt and was highly self-critical, constantly revisiting and reworking his paintings in an attempt to capture his vision more fully. His dedication to his craft and his uncompromising pursuit of artistic truth laid the groundwork for future generations of artists. Cezanne's influence extended far beyond his contemporaries. His innovative approach to composition and his exploration of form and color paved the way for the development of modern art. His work inspired and influenced artists such as Pablo Picasso and Henri Matisse, who admired his ability to distill the essence of a subject into its essential elements. Today, Cezanne is celebrated as one of the great masters of modern art. His paintings, with their dynamic brushwork and bold use of color, continue to captivate viewers and inspire new generations of artists. His relentless quest for artistic truth and his unwavering commitment to his vision have secured his place in art history as a true pioneer and innovator. Art in Five, Paul Gauguin. Paul Gauguin, one of the most influential artists of the late 19th century, was born in Paris in 1848. His family was of French and Peruvian descent, and Gauguin spent much of his youth shuttling between France and South America. He was largely self-taught as an artist, and his early career was marked by a series of failures and setbacks. In 1883, Gauguin made a life-changing decision. He abandoned his job as a stockbroker and moved to Brittany a rugged region in western France that was renowned for its traditional way of life. There, he began to experiment with a new style of painting that combined bright, flat colors with bold, simplified forms. His paintings from this period, such as Vision After the Sermon and The Yellow Christ, were unlike anything else being produced at the time, and they caused a sensation in the art world. Despite his growing reputation as an artist, Gauguin remained restless. He was unhappy with the commercialism and conservatism of the French art scene, and he yearned for a more authentic, primitive way of life. In 1891, he set sail for Tahiti, a French colony in the South Pacific that he hoped would offer the inspiration and freedom he craved. The reality of life in Tahiti was far from idyllic. Gauguin struggled to adapt to the harsh living conditions, and he was often beset by illness and financial difficulties. Nevertheless, he threw himself into his work, producing a series of paintings that celebrated the beauty and vitality of Tahitian culture. His most famous works from this period include Tahitian Women on the Beach and Where Do We Come From? What Are We? Where Are We Going? Gauguin's time in Tahiti was fraught with controversy. He was accused of exploiting the local people, and some critics dismissed his paintings as exoticist fantasies. 
Nevertheless, his work had a profound impact on the art world, inspiring a generation of artists to explore new forms of expression and break free from the constraints of Western tradition. Gauguin returned to France in 1893, but he was unable to shake his fascination with the South Pacific. He made a second trip to Tahiti in 1895, but by this time the island had changed dramatically. The French had imposed their own culture on the island, and Gauguin found it increasingly difficult to connect with the local people. He eventually settled on the nearby island of Hivaoe, where he spent the remainder of his life. Gauguin's later years were marked by a series of personal and financial crises. He struggled to sell his paintings, and he was plagued by health problems and isolation. Nevertheless, he continued to paint until the end of his life, producing a body of work that was as daring and innovative as anything he had done before. Today, Gauguin is remembered as a pioneer of modern art, a man who pushed the boundaries of what was considered acceptable in his time and opened up new avenues of creativity for future generations. His work continues to captivate audiences around the world, offering a window into the exotic and mysterious worlds he so brilliantly captured on canvas. Art in 5, Paul Gauguin Peter Blake, a British artist and one of the leading figures of the pop art movement, was born in Dartford, England in 1932. His artistic career has spanned several decades, and his innovative and vibrant works have made a significant impact on the art world. Blake's fascination with popular culture and consumerism became very evident early in his career. He drew inspiration from sources, such as comic books, advertisements, and music, infusing his art with a sense of nostalgia and a celebration of everyday life. His iconic work, The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album cover, created in collaboration with his then-wife Jan Haworth, exemplifies his ability to merge art and popular culture, capturing the spirit of the era. Blake's art often incorporated elements of collage, using found objects and images to create multi-layered compositions. He skillfully combined disparate elements, such as vintage postcards, movie stars, and icons of British culture, to create visually striking and thought-provoking pieces. His collages were a reflection of the vibrant and diverse society in which he lived, offering a commentary on mass media, consumerism, and the allure of fame. Beyond his collage work, Blake also explored painting, printmaking, and sculpture. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail, often incorporating intricate patterns, textures, and symbolism into his pieces. Blake's art possessed a playful and whimsical quality, challenging traditional notions of fine art and inviting viewers to engage with the imagery on multiple levels. In addition to his personal artistic endeavors, Blake has been an influential teacher and mentor to younger generations of artists. He served as a professor at the Royal College of Art, London, where he shared his knowledge and passion for art, nurturing emerging talent and encouraging experimentation and innovation. Blake's impact on popular culture extended beyond the art world. His collaborations with musicians, including album covers for iconic bands such as The Who and Oasis, further solidified his place as a cultural icon. His art not only adorned album covers, but also became an integral part of the visual identity of the music he helped shape. Today, Peter Blake's contributions to the art world are widely recognized and celebrated. His pioneering spirit and ability to seamlessly merge high and low culture have left an indelible mark on contemporary art. His works continue to inspire and captivate audiences, reminding us of the power of art to reflect and shape the world around us. Peter Blake's legacy as a visionary artist and cultural commentator remains enduring and influential. Roy Lichtenstein, an influential American artist of the 20th century, is celebrated for his distinctive contributions to the pop art movement. Born in New York City on October 27, 1923, Lichtenstein's artistic journey encompassed various phases, from his early explorations of traditional art styles to his iconic adaptation of comic book aesthetics. His innovative approach to art, mocked by his bold imagery and a sharp critique of consumer culture, solidified his position as a pioneer of pop art. 
Lichtenstein's early life and education laid the groundwork for his artistic evolution. He studied at the Art Students League in New York and later pursued a Master of Fine Arts degree at Ohio State University. His early works reflected the influence of movements like Cubism and Expressionism, showcasing his technical skills and experimentation with different styles. However, it was his encounter with the burgeoning pop culture of the 1960s that would propel him into the limelight. The emergence of pop art in the 1960s provided Lichtenstein with a fresh avenue for his creative expression. He turned to the world of comic books, advertisements, and everyday objects as inspiration for his art. His unique interpretation of these familiar images involved meticulous hand painting that simulated the mechanical printing techniques of comics, including the use of Ben Day dots and primary colors. This replication of mass-produced imagery questioned notions of originality, highlighting the repetitive and superficial nature of popular culture. Among Lichtenstein's most iconic works is Wham! 1963, a diptyke painting that captures the intensity of aerial combat, sourced from a comic book panel. Through this monumental artwork, Lichtenstein transformed a transient moment into a timeless symbol of both heroism and tragedy. The meticulous detail of the plane and the fiery explosion, juxtaposed with the deliberate mechanical style, evokes a complex emotional response from the viewer. Lichtenstein's artistic exploration extended beyond comics to encompass a diverse array of subjects. He reimagined famous works of art by artists such as Picasso and Monet, effectively emerging high art with popular culture. His series Brushstrokes, 1965, which rendered painterly gestures in a stylized manner, demonstrated his ability to blur the line between representation and abstraction. These works showcased Lichtenstein's ability to engage with art history while maintaining his signature style. Beyond his visual art, Lichtenstein's work held a deep conceptual significance. By appropriating and recontextualizing mass-produced images, he addressed the commercialization of art and the shallowness of contemporary visual culture. His art questioned the boundaries between high and low art forms, prompting viewers to reconsider their preconceived notions of artistic value. Roy Lichtenstein's influence continues to reverberate in the art world and beyond. His legacy can be seen in the works of subsequent generations of artists who draw inspiration from popular culture, as well as the incorporation of pop art aesthetics into advertising and design. Lichtenstein's art remains a testament to his keen observation of the world around him and his ability to transform the mundane into the extraordinary. Through his innovative approach to arts, he bridged the gap between fine art and popular culture, leaving an indelible mark on the trajectory of contemporary art history. Jeff Koons is an American artist widely recognized for his provocative and controversial works that blur the boundaries between art and popular culture. Born in York, Pennsylvania in 1955, Koons has become one of the most influential and commercially successful artists of his generation. Koons' artistic career began in the late 1970s when he moved to New York City and worked as a commodities broker on Wall Street. However, his passion for art led him to pursue a career as a full-time artist. Influenced by pop art and conceptual art movements, Koons started creating works that challenged traditional notions of aesthetics and consumerism. One of Koons' notable bodies of work is his Banality series, which he created in the late 1980s. These sculptures, made of porcelain and painted wood, depict everyday objects and figures, such as Michael Jackson, porcelain puppies, and pink panthers. The series explores themes of kits, mass culture, and the commodification of art, raising questions about taste, value, and the role of art in society. Another iconic series by Koons is the Balloon Dog series, which consists of large-scale stainless steel sculptures that resemble inflated balloon animals. These sculptures reflect Koons' fascination with childhood nostalgia, innocence, and the ephemeral nature of life. The shiny, reflective surfaces of the sculptures capture the viewer's attention and evoke a sense of wonder and playfulness. Koons is also known for his controversial collaboration with the fashion brand Louis Vuitton, where he created a line of handbags featuring famous artworks, including Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Vincent van Gogh's Wheatfield with Cypresses. This collaboration further solidified Koons' reputation as an artist who blurs the boundaries between art and commercialism, raising questions about the relationship between art, commerce, and the art market. Throughout his career, Koons has faced both praise and criticism for his work. 
His sculptures often require meticulous craftsmanship and the collaboration of skilled artisans to achieve their polished and flawless appearance. This approach challenges traditional notions of authorship and art and raises questions about the role of the artist in the production of artworks. Kuhn's artworks have been exhibited in major museums and galleries around the world, including the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Tate Modern in London, and the Centre Pompidou in Paris. His works have also fetched record-breaking prices at auctions, making him one of the most financially successful artists in history. Jeff Kuhn's art continues to provoke and engage audiences, sparking conversations about art, consumerism, and popular culture. His works challenge conventional notions of taste and provoke discussions about nature and the value of art in contemporary society. Whether celebrated or criticized, Kuhn's contributions to the art world has undeniably left a lasting impact and established him as a leading figure in contemporary art. Art in 5 Solowit Solowit was a renowned American artist known for his contributions to the conceptual art movement. He was born in 1928 in Hartford, Connecticut, and grew up in New Britain. Lewitt studied at Syracuse University, where he earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1949. Lewitt began his career as an artist in the 1960s, a time when the art world was undergoing significant changes. It was during this period that conceptual art emerged as a major new movement challenging traditional notions of art and creativity. Lewitt quickly became a leading figure in this movement and his work would go on to have a profound influence on the course of contemporary art. One of Lewitt's most significant contributions to conceptual art was his embrace of the idea that the concept or idea behind a work of art was more important than the final product itself. This idea became a cornerstone of conceptual art and set it apart from traditional art forms, which focused more on the physical creation of objects. Lewitt's work was characterized by its simplicity and geometric forms. He used basic shapes such as squares, circles, and triangles, arranging them in patterns that were often repeated throughout his work. He also explored the use of color, using bright, bold hues to create a sense of energy and movement in his pieces. One of Lewitt's most famous series of works is his wall drawings, which he began creating in the 1960s. These pieces were large-scale, site-specific installations that covered entire walls with geometric shapes and patterns. Each piece was unique, designed specifically for the space in which it was created. Lewitt created hundreds of wall drawings throughout his career, and they remain some of his most significant and influential works. Lewitt's work was not only influential within the art world, but also had a significant impact on design and architecture. He was commissioned to create many public artworks, including murals, sculptures, and installations, which are still on display in cities around the world. In addition to his art, Lewitt was also a prolific writer and thinker on the subject of art and creativity. He wrote extensively about his own work and the work of others, contributing to the ongoing conversation about the nature and purpose of art. Lewitt continued to create art until his death in 2007, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence artists and thinkers around the world. His emphasis on the importance of concept and his use of simple geometric forms have had a lasting impact on the art world, challenging traditional notions of what art can be and inspiring new generations of artists to push the boundaries of creativity. Art in 5 Solowit Art in 5 Sonia Delany Sonia Delany was a Russian-born artist and designer who played a key role in the development of the avant-garde movement in Europe in the early 20th century. She was born in Sarah Stern in 1885 in Ukraine, but later changed her name to Sonia Turk when she moved to Paris in 1905 to study art. There, she met her future husband, the painter Robert Dulani, with whom she would collaborate on many of her most famous works. Together, Sonia and Robert developed a style of painting that they called simultaneism, which emphasized the use of bright colors and geometric shapes to create dynamic, multi-layered compositions. They were inspired by the new technologies of the time, such as electricity and telegraphy, which they saw as emblematic of the modern era. Sonia's work was particularly innovative in its use of color. 
She was one of the first artists to recognize the expressive potential of color, using it not just as a means of representation, but as an independent element of design. She created vibrant abstract compositions that explored the interplay of color, shape, and light. In addition to her work as a painter, Sonia was also an accomplished designer. She applied the same principles of color and geometric abstraction to textiles, fashion, and home decor, creating bold modern designs that were unlike anything that had been seen before. She collaborated with many major fashion houses, including Liberty of London and Jacques Heim, and her designs were worn by some of the most fashionable women of the day. Sonia's work was celebrated in her lifetime, and she was one of the few women artists to achieve significant recognition and success during the early 20th century. She exhibited her work in major galleries and museums throughout Europe and the United States, and her designs were widely admired and imitated. Despite her achievements, Sonia faced significant challenges as a female artist and designer in a male-dominated field. She had to fight against the prevailing attitudes of the time, which saw women as inferior and incapable of producing serious art. But she refused to be discouraged and continued to push the boundaries of what was possible in art and design. Sonia's legacy continues to inspire and influence artists and designers today. Her innovative use of color and geometric abstraction paved the way for many of the artistic movements that followed, including abstract expressionism and op art. Her designs are still admired for their bold, modern aesthetic, and her pioneering spirit continues to serve as a model for women in the arts and beyond. Art in 5 Sonia Delany Akira Toriyama, born on April 5, 1955, in Nagoya, Japan, is a highly influential manga artist and character designer. He's best known as the creator of the iconic manga series, Dragon Ball, and its various adaptations including the immensely popular anime series and films. Toriyama's journey in the world of manga began in the 1970s when he started working as a professional artist and illustrator. He gained recognition for his unique art style, which features expressive characters with distinctive facial features and a blend of comedic and action-oriented storytelling. In 1984, Toriyama introduced Dragon Ball to the world, a manga series that would go on to become a global phenomenon. The story follows the adventures of Son Goku, a young martial artist with incredible strength and an insatiable appetite for growth. With a mix of martial arts, fantasy, and science fiction elements, Dragon Ball captivated audiences with its thrilling battles, humorous moments, and engaging characters. Toriyama's art style is characterized by clean lines, dynamic action poses, and expressive facial expressions. His ability to convey intense energy and movement through his illustrations adds a sense of excitement to the story. Toriyama's talent for creating memorable characters is evident in the diverse case of Dragon Ball, each with their unique personalities and designs that have become iconic in the world of manga and anime. Beyond his artistry, Toriyama's storytelling skills have played a significant role in the success of Dragon Ball. He expertly weaves together elements of adventure, humor, and drama, creating a captivating narrative that keeps readers and viewers hooked. The series explores themes of friendship, determination, and the power of self-improvement, resonating with audiences of all ages. Toriyama's creativity extends beyond Dragon Ball. He's also worked on other notable manga series such as Dr. Slump, a comedic science fiction manga that showcases his knack for humor and imaginative storytelling. Additionally, he's contributed character designs to video games, including the Dragon Quest series, further cementing his influence in the realm of gaming. Toriyama's impact on popular culture is undeniable. Dragon Ball has not only achieved immense commercial success, but has also become a cultural phenomenon inspiring countless adaptations, merchandise, and a dedicated fan base worldwide. The series has influenced subsequent manga and anime creators, shaping the industry and becoming a benchmark for action-packed storytelling. Despite his tremendous success, Toriyama is known for his humble nature and love for his craft. He continues to engage with fans and create new works, demonstrating his passion and dedication to his art. His contributions to manga and anime have left an enduring legacy, and his influence can be felt in the works of many artists who have been inspired by his style and storytelling techniques. Akira Toriyama's creativity, artistry, and ability to craft captivating stories have earned him a special place in the hearts of manga and anime enthusiasts worldwide. 
His work has entertained and inspired generations, and his impact on the industry will continue to be felt for years to come.